Hello everyone, welcome uh, to this episode uh, for the Instagram clone. So what we're gonna do uh, for this one, uh, so I'm gonna first thing show you the demo about what that's gonna be looks like at the end of this episode. So here when we click on add command, what we want is to get all the command, scroll the list right there, and we want also um, uh, to be able to add a command. So I can say hello there, and when I'm gonna click send, we see hello there, right there. So this is the plan uh, for this episode. I hope you're going to enjoy it and we're going to start it right now. Perfect. So now uh, what we've done in the last one, we forget to do one thing and that was one of my mistakes. It's about, look here, I have add some demo command and when I'm going to click on add a command, look what's going to happen. And what is this thing right there? Why it's like transparent like this? What happened? So this is what we need to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, command screen. And inside the command screen, what we're going to need to do is to fix uh, the background color of this input section. So we're going to say background color. And we want it to be white. So now if I save and I rerun the app and I click add a command, at least it's not <laughs> why uh, it's not the transparent uh, anymore so this way at least we see uh, all the stuff okay after that what we uh, gonna do it's we're gonna we want to be able to add a command because right now if i add a command uh, nothing happened i get just the alert uh, we've done in the last one right uh, there so what we're gonna do it's we're gonna start by creating uh, the mutation so we're gonna create the mutation um, inside src uh, GraphQL mutation and the file we're gonna create it's gonna be called uh, create command mutation dot gs uh, sorry if I use it but that do this in GraphQL mutation create command mutation what we can do is just uh, get all this create photo mutation just to go faster and inside this create command we're gonna do this we're gonna remove this feed we're gonna remove that from it we're gonna do create command. I just like to name my mutation and my query. And what we're gonna do now, it's we're gonna uh, say what we need. So inside GraphQL, when we create a command, we need to have the photo ID and the text. So if we look here, create command, photo ID and text. So what we do, it's photo ID. It's gonna be a type of ID. And uh, text is gonna be a type of string. After that, we're going to say create command. It's going to be a photo ID right there. So photo ID It's going to be of type photo ID and text text. After that, because I don't want to work with fragment for this one, I'm going to just copy and paste whatever we have right there and put it right there. You can use fragment or whatever. I mean, it's it, it, it's for tutorial, so I just want to go quicker to run more on feature. So now we have this mutation. We're gonna just keep like we did with the last one. So we're gonna go inside the index.js, inside mutation, inside GraphQL, and we're gonna do export default as create command mutation from create command mutation, like that. So now, inside this file, we're going to import from React Apollo GraphQL and we're going to import the mutation. Okay. Don't know why the debug, uh, the, the app the crash button. <laughs> so now here, what are we going to do? It's we're going to scroll uh, down and we're going to make use of the GraphQL. Why don't use the mutation uh, uh, component like we did here with the query? So the one would do render props and things like that. Uh, I mean, it's just because I don't want to um, bind my uh, text input value. I don't want to rebind inside the render my text input value and thing like this and my submit and stuff like that. So that's just one preference. So I keep the query for this, but the mutation, I keep it outside. So now here we're going to put the create photo mutation and now here we can pass props. The, the props we're going to pass are going to receive mutate and the on props, so the component props. 
this thing here need to return an object and we're gonna call the the finally the props action on create common this one gonna receive a text and you're gonna call the mutate function so this mutate function gonna receive some variable so this is the variable we have put like the text and you need to have also the photo ID and how we get that on props that photo ID because remember we get the photo ID just by doing this that props that photo ID on props equal to this thing so that's why we can do this after that uh, just by doing this we're gonna test it so I'm gonna add the on create command so now what we can do is just right there remove the alert and just say this that props that on create command and put the this that state that command inside that what i'm gonna do is because i've put a lot of testing uh, comments i'm gonna go inside one i have nothing so i think this third one yeah so now i'm gonna say hello world i'm gonna click send nothing happened uh, we get an error so that's maybe why also. So now we're gonna open that, and now we get an error. We get uh, image URL can be blank. What I've done wrong? Create comment and the create comment mutation. Create comment. Oh my god, I did the photo. Sorry about this. That was great comment. Sorry, you must have uh, you must have lo a lot of me right there. So right there. So the third one. I'm gonna say hello well. So now I'm gonna click send. Inside my uh Elixir backend, we see now the insert into photo command uh, with the um, photo ID and the text and the user ID with all the, uh, the, the, the value right there. So uh, 16 for the photo ID, hello world, and the user ID number six. And this is uh, what we want. So now, as you can see, uh, the thing is we don't see uh, this uh, command any, uh, at all. So we're going to need to uh, add this to the cache. So what we can do is we can make use of the optimi optimistic response. So this way we're gonna optimize, uh, use the, uh, sorry, uh, optimize UI. It's about you change the UI before even the server responds to you. What I mean by that, it's example, you here we're gonna create a command. We're gonna show the command. If we get an error from the server, we remove the command. If we get a success, we still uh, show it to the user. This way the user win a lot because for him he think it's really quick and uh i mean it's gonna look like real time so it's really really awesome and if we get an error uh, apollo gonna manage it for us and for this what we need is to have first thing a type name here we're gonna see it's a mutation because we create a comment after that we're gonna say create comment so we need to pass the value to this uh object right there and we're gonna say gonna have an id okay because right now we don't even know which ID that's going to look like and we don't want to use example the date because uh, I don't know like maybe someone see the command and get another uh, with the same ID if we use the date and we use subscription you see what I mean so here what are we going to do it's math that run math that random multiple by minus and that's going to be uh, 1 million like that Now here what we can do, it's type name and now that's going to be a type of command. This is the type we got right there. After that, we're going to say for the insert at value, that's going to be new date. For the text, we have access to it right there. And now that's going to be the weirdest part. It just we're going to need to manage it in the future. We can use the Apollo link state and thing like that. It's just because we need to have the user. And why I say that? It's because inside my create, uh, not photo, but create common mutation, we have the user avatar and username. Okay. And we need to have it to uh, recopy finally whatever we need to show. So for now, we're going to say for the ID, we know it's uh, six. So I'm going to just say user six. So this is the way you can send ID uh, for um, without the default. Uh, 
get the default uh, data ID. Just he take the finally the type name and just put the ID after that. So if that would be a photo, that would be like this. So this is me. Take yours if you want. The username is going to be equimper. So this is mine. Again, you can change and for the avatar in this file, we have already imported the fake avatar. So we're going to use it. Again, this thing, it's just for prototype. Uh, for prototype. You're going to need to change it for sure uh, for your app himself. It just at least you see which kind of value you need. Maybe with uh, Apollo Link State or something like that, or you get it from your prop. So you get the, uh, the, the user uh, object here. So you know this is the, the viewer himself. So you can do this right there. Or even thing you can do a middleware for this. So after that here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do update. And update, take two arguments. The first one is going to be the cache or the store, whatever you want to call that. And you take an object with where you're going to receive data and the create comment. And now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to fetch my data from my store that read query. And I'm going to say my read query. My query is going to be this get comment we have at the top of this file. After that, what I'm going to do is I need to pass the variable, the same variable we have. So photo ID is equal to the own props that photo ID like that. After that, we need to write to the store the new change. So this data is going to be an object where you're going to add the comment. OK, so what we can do is we can say store that write query. This thing need again the query and the variable. But now you need the data. Where this one gonna have an object where you have the comments so and this thing because we want to add the comments we're gonna say dot 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 data that comment because it's an array of comments and we add finally this create comments object we're gonna receive back. Oh, that's gonna work. So now I'm gonna go here inside my third one where I'm supposed to see just hello world and I'm gonna say uh, just I don't know like hello again. If I do this and I click send, boom, I get right there my hello again. And anyway, if we look in the debugger, we get no error. So this is what we want. I'm going to just put it right there, a bit smaller, yeah, like that. Perfect. So now we have the stuff. So now we can say, uh, I don't know, like uh, yo, and we get this right there. This is what we want. Perfect. Now the thing is, when you're going to get a lot of comments, this is what's going to happen. Where are my comments below? So now you need to scroll to get the comment. And now you see, first thing when I scroll, I have one comment below right there. If I close my keyboard, you see I have so many comments. The thing is, it's all about this keyboard height. We don't know the keyboard I, and this is what we're going to need to fix. And we're going to make use of something. Uh, we're going to make use of uh, a way of writing a, co a component like uh, Apollo have done here. This query, uh, this render props, and this is what we're going to need. Uh, we're going to do. So if you have never learned about render props, I think that's going to be a pretty good place to learn this. But before that, we need to prepare this file for. So what are we going to do? It's we're going to create the stuff. Uh, we're going to create the stuff from here and after that, we're going to manage it outside. Okay. I think that's going to be the better ID. First thing we're going to want is to get the keyboard object from a React Native. Okay. Also, one of the other thing we can do, it's going to be to wrap the flat list with this keyboard avoiding view, putting uh, the behavior to be a padding. And what we're going to do after that, it's we're going to say keyboard vertical offset and we're going to say the input height. Okay. If I just do this, what is going to happen? It's at least right now, you're going to see at least now I can scroll. But again, I have some miss uh, thing right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to my flat list right there. I'm going to add a content container style so that's going to be the style of the container inside i'm going to call that content list and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just say finally padding button i want it to be the equal of the input i and i'm going to say multiple by two 
just because I want to have more space. So I want to have a padding equal to the input height. So at least now I don't go, I'm going to see the last input. You see, now I have this space. Uh, maybe you want to see just input height, so that's going to look like this, but I like to have some space. Okay, now what we're going to do, it's we're going to change the, we need to uh, keep track of the keyboard place, okay? And also the height of the screen. So how are we going to do this? So we're going to use keyboard. We can remove alert. And we're going to make use of dimension. Dimension is the way for you to get the dimension of the cur uh, screen. And we can get that. We're going to save it right inside the state. So we're going to say screen height. Going to be equal to dimension the get here you put window and you do dot i so that's going to be the dimension of the curve screen now what i'm going to do it's inside the component in mouth okay i'm going to create two listener i'm going to call one called keyboard did show listener equal keyboard that add listener we call that key board did show all that is inside the docs of react native so you can check it and now i'm gonna call uh, my function i'm gonna write right now so keyboard did show and i'm gonna put right there this function so this is an even listener finally and i'm gonna do the same but this thing gonna be did hide so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just selection this show do command d command d so now i can do hide like that you see right there so keyboard did hide keyboard did hide like this the second thing we need to do it's putting a component will on mouth we need to unsubscribe for them so we can say this that keyboard that show listener that remove and this that keyboard uh, did I that remove like this but now we need also to create this did I did like we did here like this perfect now what's gonna happen it's I'm gonna show you when I'm gonna get my keyboard up I'm gonna say keyboard up and when it's gonna be hide keyboard hide so now if I show my debugger and I go here keyboard up if I click outside keyboard hide keyboard up keyboard hide so this is uh the the this event is an R and why we call the remove when we all mount is because we want to make sure that we don't gonna get problem of memory and thing like this so we don't need we don't even need to listen into it because the screen don't gonna be there anymore so now i'm gonna show you something if inside this keyboard did show we have an event okay and i'm gonna just put the event right there in the console log what's gonna happen it's now you're gonna see we're gonna get some value I'm going to click add command and look what we're going to get. We get an, an object with a duration and end coordinate and start coordinate. But what we need is the end coordinate. So now we know the keyboard measure 258 uh, pixel height. So now what we can do, what we can do is maybe change the height of the flat list so one of the thing you're going to maybe think it's okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a style inside my flat list maybe called a flat list height and by default it's going to be um, this size okay it's going to be the same size of the screen uh, but when my keyboard gonna show uh, when oh, sorry when my keyboard gonna show maybe i'm gonna say this at set state I'm gonna say flat list height. It's uh, the height of the screen minus the e that n. I'm gonna just uh, this is n coordinate that height like that. And maybe you're gonna see okay when my keyboard did height, it's gonna be just back to this. And now we can close it. And now what we can do? It's inside my flat list. I'm going to do height and I'm going to do this that stay that flat list height. So this way that's going to scroll for us. You're going to see what I mean by that. 
if I click that now, oh, one second, make something run. Uh, flat list eyed, flat list light. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, it's not, uh, I know why. One thing I forget, it's if we want that to scroll for us, now we're going to make use of the inverted value, reverse the direction of the scroll, okay? We're going to see what that's going to do. Because it's inverse, we need to change that also. I'm going to show you what's going to happen. You see? Now the last one, the yeah, get at the top right there. And now this input uh, padding button, it's at the top because the bottom is top. Now the top is there. So now we can say padding top. Now you see also what that happened. Now just by doing this, if I click that, boom. And now we have the last one right there. So if I click here, boom. If I click that, we see, but it's not really nice. I mean, it's not like, it don't look like it scroll. I know some people are gonna say, oh, just use the ref and scroll too. And, but for me, what I like to do is using the animated uh, uh, library. So we're gonna use animated. First thing it's we need to create animated flat list because we don't have access to a flat list animated by default, so flat list equal to animated dot create animated component and you pass your flat list so now you need to change the flat list with this value if you do this now nothing gonna change that gonna still be a flat list it just now it can receive some animated value okay which one we can animate that i think one is go gonna be good it's gonna be this flat list and uh, height so we're gonna say new animated value is gonna be equal to this dimension height by default. And now right there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say animated that timing. This that state that flat list height. I'm gonna say two value. We want this value. And for the duration, just for now, I'm gonna say example 1000. Also, we can make use of use of driver, but we can't because we're gonna make use of the height. So we can't, if, if this is one of the question you, you want to ask, you can't because it's a ask, uh, height. So I'm gonna do this. And when that's gonna be the keyboard that hide, I'm gonna just, oh, and then I can just remove it from that and changing this. So if you don't know how animated work, it's gonna be really nice for you to learn it because uh, I mean, it's an awesome library and we need to use it when we want to do some animation and thing like this in React Native. So what animated timing need? You need a value, so an animated value. So the animated value is this flat list height. So that's why we have new animated value. So the new animated value is going to be equal to the height of the screen. So example, 1000. After that, we just say, we change that in a timing, like in a time. So the duration is going to be one second. So in one second, I want you to go from 1000 to 1000 minus this thing. So example, 700. Or here we want to change the... This thing's gonna be maybe 700 now, and we want to change back this to 1000, and we want to take one second to get to it. So now if I click that, look what's gonna happen. Nothing. I mean, not nothing. Uh, now it worked. You see? Right there. But we see one second, but at least you see scroll. So now if I click here, boom. You see this little effect? I pretty like it, but now 1000 is too much. So we're going to say 200. 200, I think, is going to be pretty good. So now just by doing this, scroll, we are at the end. We are at the end right there. If I click here, we are at the end. If I click here, we are at the end. Now I'm going to fix one problem before we jump on the render props. If I say wow right there and I click send, where is my message? It's right there at the top. Because it's the way we send the create command, we need to put that at the beginning first now. By, because we use a, a spread like this, it's pretty simple. So now if I get there, the last one is wall. I'm gonna say wall again. If I click send, wall again is right there. Perfect. Now the thing is, I cannot use anymore this, this uh, little animation we have done. And we maybe want to have this inside a chat or something like that. So 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the component right there and we're gonna, we're gonna cre create a new component called listspacer.js. Go back inside your command component, copy and paste everything. First thing we do, command D, command screen, list spacer. After that, here at the bottom, we don't need any more animation. So we're going to remove all uh, the GraphQL thing. We don't need that. We don't even need a style. We don't even need nothing here. We just need the render. We don't need this unsubmit key instructor. We don't need that. We don't need the comment here. And we don't need this set time on right there. So that we don't need this thing we don't need that we don't need animated flat list we don't need all this stuff pretty nice to have yes land for this we don't need all this stuff we don't need fragment and we don't gonna even need react because we don't gonna have any gsx why it's because we're gonna create the same thing as what react apollo have done here a render props you see this is a component children right there. This is the this is a product that children you have right there. They receive this data. So this thing thing about that, this is almost like a children who give to, to back. Now what we can do, okay, here, you're gonna see. We're gonna create here a variable inside the render props called render props. Here, what I want to return back is just the flat list height equal to the this that state that flat list height, okay? Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if we have a children, I want to return this that prop that children, and I'm gonna pass the render props inside that. Else, because that's gonna be the uh, else, I want to be able to do something like that, like render like this, and having my function from it. So what I can do, I can do return this that props that render. So that's gonna be the function I'm gonna call, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. Now I save this file, so the file is pretty simple now, it's, you get just all the even, you just, this, this component do nothing more than just matching the, the spacer with the, the list finally, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my index, the GS, I'm going to export this list spacer, so it's going to be easier to import, and now inside this one, I'm going to import it from that. But now I need to remove a lot of stuff. I'm going to want to remove this thing. This thing, I don't need that anymore. I don't need the keyboard. I don't need the wheel mount. I don't need all this stuff right there. And now what I'm going to do, I want to have access to the this, that state, that height. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, list spacer. I'm going to wrap it like that. I'm going to do like we do with React Apollo like that right there. I'm going to say curly bracket, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass my keyboard stuff, all this um, uh, all this component right there. The flat list height now going to came from this one. So this flat list height came from this thing here. And now look, okay? Look here. I have nothing about keyboard, nothing. You see? I don't even import keyboard. We have nothing more. So now if you work, we know this is coming from the component we just built. So now if I click here, that's it. You see, I really, really like this pattern. Now you may be asked, okay, yes, what is this? Uh, like uh, why we can use it? It just, yes, you can write a higher other component, but the thing is, I think it's pretty, it's much more better to do this way. Why? First thing, you don't get naming collision with the props you get. Uh, and also, other thing, thing it's more declarative. It's more easy to see what that does. So the list spacer just return a flat list height and give access to the flat list height. So now I can use this thing always to wrap other components. The only thing we can change just to make it better here, the height, the duration, we can change it to become a duration variable so if we change it we change it on both like that and i think it's pretty good this one and now we're gonna just test it 
Now if we click here, boom, that's cool for us. If we go to a component, we have a little less. You see? And now if I say hello world, boom, you get right there. So I think that's going to be that for this episode. I hope you've learned. Uh, let me know in the comment. I hope you learned the render props and you see this is not that, this is not wizard thing here. Like it's not dark magic. It's pretty simple to understand. I hope you enjoyed this, um, this one and we talk in the next one. Bye.